Welcome to this video tutorial on creating sloping paths with a consistent gradient in Rhino. I'm going to be modelling paths on these two terrains situated here and we're going to be starting on the shallower terrain and we're going to be modelling just a simple straight path along here. With both of these paths we're going to aim to keep a consistent gradient to the path and this gradient is going to be a 1 in 22 which is the steepest gradient you can have on a path in the UK without needing any landings and any other kind of resting places. So to make this we're going to start by determining the height that our gradient path needs to travel within this terrain. To do that I'm going to cut a section for each of these terrain models on this red line shown here and we can do that by using the section command by typing in section, selecting the object we want to cut which is this terrain, hitting enter and then drawing the section along this red line. And there you can see we have our section cut as shown here. Now we have that, I'm going to then draw a new line starting from the top of this section, holding the shift key to lock that horizontally and pressing the tab key to lock that in the horizontal, snapping it to that outside edge and then determining the distance I need to travel down. Now as I hover over here you can see it's around sort of 9 to 10 meters there and because we're going 220 meters along to keep this consistent gradient of a, of a 1 in 22, I need to travel 10 meters down, as shown by this little diagram here. So I'm going to type in 10 on here and lock that into the vertical. Then what we'll do is we're going to then redraw a new line from the bottom of that piece to the top of there and delete my construction line. I can also delete this section now. And this line is essentially the gradient of the path that I want to make. Now what you can see is that because my terrain isn't even all the way down, at some points the path goes below the terrain and at some points it travels above the terrain. And this means that at points I'm going to need to excavate part of the terrain to make my path and at other points I'm going to need to build up the terrain to raise that level to keep that gradient consistent. So in order to model this we're going to use the sweep command along this line to create our path. And I'm going to start by just drawing out a simple path in the cross section down here and we're going to make it six meters across and we're going to make it about 10 meters deep and the reason for that is that the depth doesn't really matter we just want to make sure it cuts completely into the ground where we need it to so once we've made that piece we're then just going to rotate it using the gumball and holding the shift key to lock that into 90 degrees and then i'm going to move it on the middle point and snap it to the end of that line like so once we've got that, we're going to use the sweep command, sweep one here, select our rail, which is our gradient line, and then select our sweep shape up here. Hit enter to sweep that across, and then select that object and cap it using the cap command to close each end. What is also useful to do is just extrude the ends of each of these pieces just to make sure it cuts through the geometry, because as you can see here, it's not quite at that edge. So we can use the extrude surface command, select that outside edge and just extrude it out like so. And we're going to do the same for this bottom piece. Once you've got those, we can select all three of them, Boolean union them together to make one shape. And once we've made that, we can then subtract that shape from our terrain. And to do that, we're going to be using the Boolean tools here and we'll use the Boolean difference tool. So we'll select our terrain hit boolean difference, select our object, hit enter, hit ok there and we can delete our main object and there you can see that it's cut into the terrain at the point that the path cuts below there. Now for the other half of the terrain where we need to build up we're going to do the opposite so I'm going to move my curve downwards and snap the top point to the line like so. We're going to repeat that sweep command sweeping along this edge. Like so we're going to cap this again and then we're going to extrude out the edges once again. Just making sure that we've got each side like that and then we can join them all together. Then this time we're just going to select my path and we're going to boolean difference the terrain from that path. 
and that will subtract the rest of the terrain and we can de delete this end piece and just leave the piece that builds up that path therefore giving us our consistent gradient across that site and building up where we need to and cutting in where we need to as well so that's essentially the basic premise and that's quite easy to do when we've just got a straight path cutting down the terrain but where this gets more complex is when our path needs to slightly bend or twist because the height we need to get is much larger in that height difference. Now, to put this into context, we're going to start with this piece over here. And I'm going to start by taking a section through this model again. So we're going to select our object and then use my section line to cut a section through there. Now, what we can see with this piece already is it's a much steeper piece of terrain. If I draw my line again from the very top of this terrain along, holding the tab key to lock that into position, and then hovering downwards to check this vertical height, you can see in my distance setting down here that it's around a 27, 28 meters difference. So that's quite a big height change here. Now, kind of if we round that up to around a 30 meter height difference, that's essentially three times the height difference that this line was. Now, if I want to keep my 1 in 22 sort of gradient we've got for our path, it's going to mean that instead of traveling 220 meters, I'm going to travel 660 to achieve a height of 30 meters, essentially timesing these figures by three in that way. So our path is going to need to be 660 meters long in order to give us that consistent gradient across the path. So this means it's not going to be able to go in a directly straight line. We're going to have to zigzag the path along the face of this terrain in order to achieve that length to get our gradient to be below a sort of 1 in 22 steepness. Now to do this, I'm going to start by sketching out my path in the top view. We're going to start sketching that line out using the polyline tool up here. And we're just going to start from the very top of the surface up here and we're just going to sketch this out paying attention to that distance at the bottom so we're going to start with about 100 meters this way then we're going to do a kind of 200 or so meters in this direction so that's 300 and then we'll do another 200 in this direction that's around 500 then we'll do a kind of one 50, 140, 130 around in this direction, so that's 630 plus around 50 meters, so that's around 680, which is over our 660 that we require. So that's roughly the route of the path that I want to take there. Now we've sketched out this straight path, we're going to use this as a guide to draw out a more meandering route along this terrain, which will be more enjoyable if we were creating this path to walk down this particular route. To do that, I'm going to take my curve tool here, starting from the same point, we're just going to use our first line as a guide and then draw a kind of curving route along here, just placing a sort of few points along that route to create a nice sort of meandering route along this edge, ending up roughly at that kind of center point line around here. Once we've done that, we can then select the line and tweak that point just using these control points here to just kind of tweak that line to be more consistent with the shape of the route that we'd like to create. And you can spend as much time as you need with this just kind of playing around, tweaking the route until you've got that correct shape that you're aiming for. I'm just trying to make a nice kind of gradual smooth curve which isn't too tight at any point that can slowly kind of meander down this terrain as we go but kind of whatever route you want to design with these paths it's sort of up to you in this case of how you're designing your particular routes and how you want that to look or feel like as you're sort of moving through these spaces so it's always good to think about that experience while you're designing these particular pieces so once we're happy with that route and I think that's kind of about where I want it. It will be good to also check the length of this path and we can do that by typing in length into the command line 
and having a look at that total length. And that's 700 meters, so that's over our target of 660, which is what we need to get our consistent gradient over a 1 in 22. So that means that's good enough and long enough to achieve that gradient. So with that known, we can now start to create our slope of this path using the route we've made here. I'm going to go back to the perspective view and locating my particular route, which you might have to locate in the top down view like so, and then move into place in perspective. What might have happened, as you can see here, is that we've got one point that's kind of higher up than the rest, and that's just because it was snapping onto a point above when I was making it. So if you need to flatten out a route such as this, we can use the set point command, S-E-T-P-T, -T, like so, set it to that Z axis, make sure it's aligned to world, and then we can clip it to this top line here, and that will just flatten out our line for us there. And I'm gonna delete this other one. Now we've made that, we now need to divide our line up into equal increments, which are going to help us set up our gradient here. Now, because we're aiming for a 1 in 22 and we're traveling roughly a height of 30 meters, that means I need a kind of length of 660 and 30 meters. We want to kind of jump one meter increment with each depression of around 22 meters. So to make this easy, because I need to travel 30 meters high, we're just going to divide that line up by 30 there to give us one meter increments in which we need to step this height down by. So to do that, I'm going to select the curve, type in divide here and type in 30 segments like so. And what that would do is it would just divide the line up by 30 equal segments. And I know that each of these points needs to be one meter lower than the previous one in order to give us that consistent gradient along that path. Now, in order to set those heights, what we're first going to do is just select the line and we'll isolate it by going to the visibility tab here and clicking on the isolate objects. With that isolated, I'm now going to reset these points to be the right height. And to do this, we could either select the point, select the move tool, lock it vertically and move each one, first one by minus one, then the second one, do the same. By minus two but as you can see this is a very long-winded process in this way there's a slightly quicker technique we can use and we can use what's called the nudge commands in Rhino in order to speed this up these nudge commands are found under file properties modeling aids and nudge here and here you've got your nudge keys and essentially it's holding down the alt key and then either pressing the arrow keys or page up and page down in order to kind of lift something up and down in the vertical plane. And the amount these objects will be moved or nudged is based upon this nudge key amount here. So it's saying I've typed in one meter in that nudge key amount. So what this means is I can select a point, hold the alt key, and if I press page down on my keys, which is just above my arrow keys, it will knock it down by one meter. And I can tap it again and do by two and then by three. And it will show you a cumulative amount of how much that's been moved downwards. That's moved down three meters. And there we can kind of see it. So then I can select my next point, tap it four times and it will move down by four. Select the next one, do it by five and so on and so on. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause the video and just set these lines by those points all the way along. Now we've set those points, you can now see that we've got that consistent gradient moving down our curve with that one meter increment with each point we're moving down. Now we've done that, I'm going to then select the curve interpolate points tool here to draw a curve through the points I've made. And so I'm just going around snapping to each of those points to draw my curve going through each of the points that I've made here just going around making sure we're snapping to each point in turn to create this particular curve like so. And this will give us that consistent gradient because each of the points is set to the gradient we require there. And there you can see if we sort of look at it from the side that we've now got our same sloping path but it's matching the gradient we require from it like so. 
So with that done, we can then select our curve and we can go back to our main model back here and click unisolate on the right hand click there to show that particular piece. Now we're going to do the same thing we did with our first path where we're going to draw a cross section of our path along that curve. So I'm going to select my curve, select my cross section here and just for ease of kind of doing this we're going to quickly isolate it again just so we can see these together. I'm going to copy my cross section over to my curve here making sure that when I do we just copy it from the midpoint and snap it to the end of that line. Then what we're going to do is I'm first going to need to make sure that my cross section is perpendicular to the line so it sweeps along this properly and to do that I'm just going to use the rotate tool to first rotate this so it matches the kind of angle of the line. I'm just using the near snap to snap that on and once we've rotated it this way we can just lock on to the Z axis rotation, hold the shift key and rotate it 90 degrees and that way it will be perpendicular to our line. Once done I'm going to copy that up to the top piece as well and then we're just going to use that sweep command again to sweep both that path along and the second one along as well. We're going to just cap both of these. We're then going to extrude out these edges here and we can do them both at the same time. Same for the bottom. Just selecting these, extruding them out. And then we're just going to boolean the top one together just using that boolean union command and then we're going to boolean the bottom piece together using the same boolean union command. Now we've created our sweeps we now just need to cut them into the path that we've originally modeled so we can select the line again, unisolate once again and then we're just going to start by subtracting the top curve from the terrain so we'll use the boolean difference tool, select the terrain, hit enter, select the top curve, hit enter and then we can delete that curve once it's done. So there we've cut out the points where it's cutting into the terrain. And then we'll do the opposite using the Boolean difference tool, selecting the curve first and then selecting the terrain to subtract one from the other. And you can get rid of these end pieces if you need and we might have to trim that last one off as well. But there you can see we've kind of built up the ramp in the bits we need to. We're cutting in to the bits we don't need that ramp there but we've got our consistent gradient traveling along this curve like so. So we've got that 1 in 22 gradient going all the way along and we know that because each of our points are one increment apart from each other and you can always kind of test and measure between them to check that distance and it's around 23 meters so just above it's slightly shallower it's like a 1 in 23 gradient we've got here. So that's perfect for this particular curve. So that was just a quick video tutorial on how to model paths with a consistent gradient on different heights and contours of terrain here. You can use this for really steep terrain as well as really shallow terrain as we found and it really just depends on the route that your path takes in which gradient you want to keep within that path. I hope you found this video tutorial useful and if you want to watch any other videos on similar techniques in Rhino and visualizing in V-Ray, please check out the videos on the channel.